Coffee. And hot. Hey, Master. Hmm. You know it's Tuesday, right? So? Well, we have a review to do. What? Oh, no, no. We did our two this month. We're done. Oh, Christ. This is a month where, you know, that review every two weeks thing means you're going to be doing three reviews in September. No. No, you're crazy, because we did the... No, wait, because... Shit. Hold that thought. Uh, hi, uh, I'm the film bastard, welcome back. Uh, something clever, interesting trivia. Let's dive right into... My Winnipeg. Okay. Oh, look, it's a part of the pretentious snob collection. Oh, and it was co-produced by the Hipster Film Channel. Oh, we're off to a great f***ing start already, aren't we? Um, okay. I wasn't born yesterday, dearie. I wasn't born yesterday, dearie. I know all about oh, it's one of those movies, huh? And all about blood. Well, when in Rome. Where did it happen? In the back seat. Proceed. Billed as one of the first ever docu-fantasias, My Winnipeg is director Guy Madden's love letter to the titular city in which he was born and raised, and, uh... Well, that's about all I've got. That's a little embarrassing, but I'm clearly a little less than prepared for this review, but... The show must go on. Besides, by this point, nothing can faze us, right? The heads stay this way for the whole winter. <sighs> Actually, the presentation of the film is something that's pretty profoundly unique. My Winnipeg fits perfectly John Grierson's definition of a documentary as the creative treatment of actuality. Guy Madden narrates the events of the film, while the images on screen reflect literally what's being said. That's where all tradition stops, though. If you've never seen a Guy Madden film, you're missing out on some fine experimental work, but it does a lot to advance the archetype of the weird experimental film. I get it! I don't get it! I'll admit, I'm not totally sure what to expect here. The Godfather graveyard caught me a little unawares, but I'm on to your game now, movie. Nothing you can do can shock me like that. Go ahead, take your best shot, throw your weirdest at me. Only boys. In the steam and dankness. What the fuck? Oh, let's just get this over with. I don't really know anything. Okay, so the gist of the film is that Except Guy Madden is trying to leave Winnipeg. But in order to leave Winnipeg, he has to confront Winnipeg? I don't know. At any rate, he hires a bunch of actors to portray his family, and they reenact scenes from his life. Every once in a while, the film will split from the narrative to follow Madden as he goes from omniscient narrator to lone voice in the wilderness, as he rallies against everything from the NHL to the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame to the fleeting nature of Canadian retail. Until then, this thoughtless new building just sits on the windswept downtown corner like a zombie in a cheap new suit. Its brick coat somehow meant as an homage to atomized Eaton's. But don't worry, that's why you have a bastard here. I'll guide you through the thick of it. You Julius. are a naughty bastard. After some scenes with the family, Madden tells us about the General Strike of 1919, which he frames as something right out of Eisenstein, complete with Marxist rhetoric and propagandist superimpositions. Just, just, just stay with me on this, alright? After some more scenes out of Family Matters, we're on another tangent, this time about seances. You know, confusing though it may be, Madden's insistence on shooting on black and white film stock actually lends itself very nicely to the dreamlike aesthetic of the film. It always makes it really pretty to watch. This is a more family matters, more tangents, and... Demolition is ugh, why is everything suddenly in color? In fact, demolition is already Whatever. F*** it. A huge tonal shift should be the last thing we think about as weird in regards to this movie. I was bundled up and taken straight home after the game. Oh, and we're back to black and white. Stellar. The 1964 Allen Cup winners 
senior hockey champs in the days of the original six, and for the Canadian national team as well. As Winnipeg hosted in you know, upon frightening wave, visits from the revolution. It may be because I'm a bottle of gin down, but this is actually starting to make a modicum of sense. Urine, breast milk, sweat, the hockey cathedral's holy trinity of odors. No, still confused. The paternal amphitheater of our game, murdered, all because he lacked luxury boxes. Okay, I'm just gonna save us all some time and read a list of weird shit that happens. There's a geriatric hockey team named after the beginning of the Great Depression, more family matters, frozen horses, a beefcake contest, a Nazi invasion, some more propaganda, and at last we come to this scene which, for all of its weirdness, I still find strangely touching. Sometimes I forget. I forget my brother Cameron is gone. I forget my father's been gone since I was 21. At some point, when you miss a place enough, the backgrounds and photos become more important than the people in them. That, in brief, was Guy Madden's My Winnipeg. I would love to tell you that in context, the film makes more sense than what I've just shown you, but realistically, it's actually even more confusing when you watch it in whole. And I think that's what makes it one of my favorite films. Like the dreams it's meant to emulate, My Winnipeg presents a city that's completely unbound by the laws of physics or societal norms. We're presented with one man's view of a city that he is both intimately familiar with and a complete stranger to. As you watch the film, you get the sense that Madden is not only directing the movie, but his whole environment. He's not trapped in Winnipeg because he has to be, but he's trapped in Winnipeg because he wants it to be that way. The actual bits of history that Madden presents are so completely entangled with wild imaginings that it's hard to dissociate fact from fantasy. You can't disengage with this material simply because you can't afford to. For being so entertaining and completely enthralling, this may be one of the best films that you've never seen. That being said, I understand that this film is not for everybody. Audiences who don't like documentaries will be immediately turned off by the Grierson style, and audiences who don't like anything but formulaic blockbusters will have their minds blown like they were Louis Del Grande. With that in mind, if you're down for a little weirdness, and I think if you've been with me this long, I have the sneaking suspicion that you might be, you should give my Winnipeg a shot. There's certainly nothing else like it. And sometimes you learn a lot about yourself if you challenge your comfortability. I'm the Film Bastard, and as always, until our next review, Six Semper Cinema. And that's a wrap. Good work. Fuck you. What the hell was that? What do you mean? Dance of the Hairless Boners, really? Well, I didn't choose the movie. I panicked. I picked the first thing off of the shelf. Really? You just had that laying around? It was on the top of the to-watch pile, so sue me. Even Guy Mad doesn't have this on the top of his to-watch pile. Hello all, welcome back. You may have noticed that there were six credits in this video where there's traditionally only five. Well, the film bastards officially sold out. <laughs> that didn't take me long. We're pleased to announce that we're working on a partnership with Gonzo today. They're a collective of writers and artists promoting self-expression, truth and freedom, and to providing an open and inclusive platform for all to share their own truth and artistic vision. You can find a link to Gonzo today somewhere on the screen, let's say here. We hope to have more to announce in the coming videos, but for now, this'll have to do. I'm the Film Bastard, and as always, until our next review, Six Semper Cinema.